there's been no shortage of shocks in Dartford, home of the London City Lionesses. The brand new FA Women's Championship side are currently second in the league with five wins in seven games. According to the team captain, Ellie Mason, they are riding very high indeed. The club was created after the decision at the end of last season by Millwall Lionesses to break away from Millwall and go it alone. That saw the birth of London City, an independent side without any ties to a men's team at all. Going it alone as an independent club is a daunting task ahead for the Lionesses. There are plenty of doubters after all, but the drive and ambition to prove everyone wrong is pulling this squad together. As Ellie says, they're shocking people, and their league position shows that. In this podcast, the 23-year-old defender tells us about the challenge facing the side this season, and she also tells us about her own football journey. She learned a lot last season at Yeovil, for example, as she came up against established WSL quality on a weekly basis in difficult club circumstances. She also takes us through why the game is so important to young girls and the very unique mission London City have set themselves. Ellie, welcome to the podcast and thanks so much for coming down uh, and chatting with us today on this episode. Um, how are things at the moment, considering it's been a very busy time and we're approaching an international break as we sit down and record? No, yeah, it's uh, been really good, to be honest. Um, you know, we've had some good results lately um, and, yeah, we're just literally taking every game as it comes. So, so It's been quite a season already for London City Lionesses. Uh, lots of eyes are on this team as well, particularly this season, as it's a new independent club, which we'll delve into a bit more later on. Second in the championship after seven games. You've been nominated as well for the league's player of the month in October. So it sounds like it's gone pretty well, considering it's essentially a new team. No, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, we're a brand new team, independent women's team. Um, and yeah, I just... I think everyone's really happy with how it's gone. Um, you know, we're working very hard every week, um, doing the, giving the performances that we need to like show. Um, and yeah, like I said, we're just getting stronger every week. Um, so yeah, but yeah, obviously I got nominated for October Player of the Month. It's a great achievement, and it is really nice to get recognised. Um, but you know, the hard work goes from everyone in the club. So yeah. Is the challenge now then to keep that going and, and how difficult a challenge is that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think I feel like we have like a bit of pressure on us as well. Um, you know, being like a brand new team, brand new setup, you know, we're a professional setup, full time team. Um, I think there is pressure, but you know, like I said, we just take each week as it goes and each game as it goes, so just to continue hard in training and go from there. Does that nomination for the Player of the Month award as well? almost build up your own confidence considering as we were talking about just before we started recording that you switched positions relatively recently in your football career as well yeah I mean you know to get recognised for like the nomination for October's Player of the Month great feeling um, you know like I've always worked my heart like work try to work my hard you know hardest and yeah just like put in performance I need to show I need to help my teammates out and, you know like yeah just working hard and I mean there was plenty of talk about London City Lionesses when it first was formed the new name came along and all that sort of stuff after what happened with Millwall last season how has it been going in this summer to like I said at the start what's essentially a new club never been there before new squad um, and you having the role as captain as well how much responsibility do you have to play a part in this new new team yeah, you know, like it's a it was a big challenge. Um, it was, it was, it was, it was a good decision, the best decision I've made. I think you know I got the role of being captain. Um, it's a huge responsibility considering it's a brand new club as well. Um, but you know I've been trusted with that responsibility, and I take that trust on. Um, and I know that I need to be there for my teammates. I need to be there for the whole team in general. Um, so yeah, we. I mean, you know, we just got to make sure that the team's 
momentum it's just going forward and yeah just make sure we put any effort in and the teamwork continues hard throughout the season being named captain and at a relatively young age as well considering you're still what, 23 yeah do you see that leadership role as something easy to take on or was it a little bit daunting at first and you've almost had to grow into it do you know what i think it's one of those things where yeah it, is, it can be a challenge but you know i've I, I, I feel I work rather be hard um, and to be given that opportunity is a, it's a, good, it's a big achievement um, I mean you know you go through challenges in your career in football but you go past those challenges as well and I feel like yeah I just I don't know it's just it's, it's a great feeling to be captain and you know just to take on the trust is, is something that I'm willing to do and big responsibilities to take on but yeah I mean I'm happy to do that and it's a great a great achievement to be able to walk out the girls every week so yeah would you say then that at, say this moment in time is it maybe the best football that you've been playing in your career so far um I mean I can't like from last year being at Yeovil you know you're playing in the top league you're playing against top international players the top teams like Arsenal's or Chelsea's and Man City's um, I think last year was a great experience to, you know, it was a big challenge, you know, being at Yeovil, like, we, and we didn't have the best results each week, but every week that went on, we got stronger as a team, and, you know, the, I mean, I think we had seven games that we lost 2-1. I mean, you know, if you look at Yeovil from the years before, before that, like their results were completely different to last year and, and you've got to look at it as last year was a great experience because you know we took the responsibility on taking the t on, taking on big teams like that and yeah like we did well and I think I think last year was a big challenge and it was a great experience because you're playing in the WSL so um, you know yeah that was a great season but this year I mean it's a brand new season brand new team a new challenge so I was very excited so yeah it's, 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 a, it's been a good season so far in terms of the brand new team, we'll talk a little bit about that team then. For people who might not have seen too much of London City so far this season, how would you describe that squad that's been put together for this season? Um, you know, if, if no one knows about us or hasn't watched us play, I think, you know, we've shocked a lot of people. Um, yeah, we definitely have. I mean, look, we're second in the league. We're one point behind Villa. Uh, we're doing really well. We've only lost two league games. Um, and you've got to look at it is that we're a brand new team. You know, half of us haven't even played with each other before. You know, we're a couple of months old, like we're doing really well. And, you know, it's one of those where if you haven't watched us, it's a great opportunity to come down if you're free one Sunday. Like, you know, I think for people who haven't watched women's football, I feel like, you, like they, they should watch because, you know, you have a different mindset on it after you've watched it. And I mean... If you, I, yeah, so I would definitely rec recommend you come down to us. Like, it's a great, great experience. And like we said, we're an independent women's team as well. So you can, there's no men's behind it or anything like that. So you know, it's a brand new, it's a brand new challenge for us as well. So people coming down, it's a, it's a great experience. I mean, as you say, you've shocked people with how well you're doing. Have you almost shocked yourselves a little bit? Um, I. I honestly don't, I, maybe a little bit, yeah, but I wouldn't say massively, only because, like, when we're training, you know, it feels right. Um, you know, the sessions that we do in training, the, the performance we put on, we're thinking, well, like, there's something really good here. Like, and you've got to believe that as a team, and we do believe that. And, you know, we're second in the league. Like, we're only going to keep shocking people. We're however many months old, you know, and we're second. Like, this team's only going to get stronger and stronger. So... Like I said, we're just going to take it week by week and go from there. I don't know if you'd set yourself any targets as a team at when the season started or beforehand, but is promotion very much on the cards now? Or is it still a take-each-game-as-it-comes type of situation? I mean, for any team, I think promotion's going to be on the cards. Um, you know, I feel like as we are a brand-new team... Um, and if we did get promoted, it I mean, you know, it's a massive thing for us. We're a massive achievement. Um, but yeah, I feel like with any club, that there is always talk about being promoted, you know, winning the league. Um, but I think 
we're just literally taking it week by week and you know what if we do get promoted what an achievement that would be a first year's independent women's club like you know it's only going to get better from there so but yeah I think we're just taking it week by week and go from there and we'll touch on that independent club side of things now and you say it would it would be an incredible achievement if you got promoted in the first season of the club being formed is there almost sort of an extra sense of respons- responsibility on you and the players to, to make it a success, considering it is a relatively new thing, being this independent club without, say, a men's club backing it financially? Yeah, like, like obviously I've got a big responsibility being captain, but, you know, everyone's a leader in that, in that team as well, being on the pitch. There's 11 leaders, not just one. Um, and, you know... We, we know what we need to do. We focus a lot of we focus a lot around training, like what we need to focus on. We do analysis a hard like a lot of work on. Um, so yeah, I mean you know like we know we know what to do, and it is a big responsibility. But imagine us being an independent women's team, winning the league, going getting promoted. It's just a huge thing for us. Like, you know, not many teams are independent. Um, so for us to say, oh, we got promoted, you know, we're a women's international, women's independent team. It, yeah, it'd be a massive achievement. And, and hearing you talk as well, because you, you train, what, five times a week. It's, it's a professional setup behind the scenes. Is it already sort of showing to people that you can be successful as this independent entity? No, yeah, definitely. I... I, I I, but like obviously it's the little things like you know when you're semi-professional like you're training three times a week yeah it's still good but it's not professional you know I used to wake up go to work go home and then go to training wouldn't get back till about 11 or 12 o'clock at night whereas now you're training in the daytime you, you're able to do more of your recovery work you're able to look after yourself a lot more you know, you haven't got to worry about any, anything else about work. It's just football you're concentrating on. And I think that's a massive key point in, in football, being professional. I think it helps a lot. And, you know, it definitely does improve your performance. And in the two years that you've essentially been professional now, I imagine you've seen the differences in yourself too. Oh, yeah, 100%. Like, you know, I remember when I used to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, finish work at 3, go home, have a nap, have dinner, go to football. You know, it's still so like the travelling. You're, it's you're constantly tired, but you do it because you love it. But looking back at it now, I'm thinking, I, how would I even do that again? You know, I'm just used to like the professional side of it now. But um, yeah, 100 percent like you know, I wouldn't change it for the world. Like it's what I love. So exactly, and th- think of the amount of people that get up, go to work, and then come back and just lie down on the sofa and yeah. think how long you were doing that and no, going back out again to train. <laughs> It's early days in the season, what, seven games, but are there any big lessons you or the group have learnt so far? Um, I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we have lost two league games. Um, one league game was a pretty bad game, but, um, you know, there's going to be bumps in the roads. We're not going to be perfect every week. Like, I know I keep saying that, but we are a brand new team and it's going to take us time. Like, some teams we're playing against, they've been together for how many years, you know? Um, so there's going to be lessons learnt, um, but yeah, like we're working on each other, we're working as a team, so that's all we can do. I suppose it's just riding out those oh, yeah. bumps when they come exactly. along. Make sure you follow Sportspiel on social media. Search for Sportspiel Pod on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or on LinkedIn. I will then turn back the clock then to sort of the, the second part of this conversation where we'll look at your early career and essentially what's made you into the footballer you are now. Um, and I'll, I'll ask first, why football? Why was football the sport for you when you were growing up? Um, do you know what? It's just one of those where I just like started playing, I think, in the garden when I was a little kid. My mum set me up to like a, a football soccer week and then yeah I just loved it from there but I mean being in school I suffered like not suffered but I was dyslexic so I found it really hard um, in school and football was something for me to go and take my mind off things you know something that I could escape from you know 
and it just took my mind off it and then yeah I just have the love for the game so it just went from there another example of, of guests we've had on this podcast that sum up how important their sport is because it's the the escapism from whatever difficulties they might be having when they're a kid sounds like it's a similar sort of situation no, for yeah, you yeah definitely like I ha- I've got dyslexia and I find it hard in school you know um, and the football was something for me that I could just go and escape get away and just go and take my mind off things and just go and play and have a look, even if it was a little kick about you know and um, it was just yeah it's just something that you can it takes your mind off it and it's just something if you love if you have to love for something you're going to want to do it every day every minute of the day that you can so yeah it helped it did help a lot when i was younger and coming through the youth setups at first watford then chelsea how good an education is that for actually paving a way and having a football career of your own no yeah definitely i mean look from every club I've been at, I've learnt things. I've learnt lessons. I've, I've, I've learnt all these type of things, and I've had really good experiences at those clubs. Um, you know, from coaching to players to how I'm playing. You know, everything. If everything gets put together, and if it wasn't, if I wasn't at those, if I didn't have those experiences, then I might not be here where I am now. Is it the values as well they teach you? Because I imagine you can have all the talent in the world, but maybe it's the work ethic and stuff like that that really gets instilled into you when you're at that age. It's yeah. so, so important. No, yeah, definitely. Like, you know, especially with Watford and Chelsea, is that they're very well-known clubs. Um, you know, if you, you get the experience, they've got experience, they then pass on to you. And, you know, you, you, you learn that from, from them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it definitely like you know. Of course, it's helped. Like I, like, like I said, I wouldn't. I don't. I doubt I'd be hit where I am now if I didn't have the, the great ex- like experience with those past teams. And, I uh, like you say, you learn something every time you go to a new club. And you were at Millwall, what two seasons back now? Did that almost put you in a good place to be that leader, this time around? Um, I don't know. I think you know. I think well, every team I've been at, I think you learn new stuff and you become the player who you are. Um, I think obviously being the leader I am being captain of London City Line this is I think that's I'd, I'd say obviously everything's ha- everything put together like you know the experiences I had like so I would yeah I, I don't know it's a, I, yeah but I suppose in terms of learning um, or learning experiences We'll talk about Yeovil because we've touched on them already and it's well documented obviously the, the stuff that happened there last season and all that but as a player there's probably no greater learning curve than, than that is going up against these WSL players on the pitch but then also having to try and get rid of all the off-pitch stuff and just focus on the game. Yeah, no, I mean like obviously like last year you're playing against your top teams, your top players you know, and you see how they handle their situations and you do learn a lot. I learned so much last year and I loved every minute of it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, you know, stuff happened from behind scenes at Yeovil, but, you know, as a team, we got on with that and you also learn from yourself in a way. Like, you know, football comes first. Like, you need to, you know, stuff that happens, but because of the love for the game you just focus on the games and you just yeah go from there but like I said like the leaders from other teams you also take that on board and how they deal with the situations um, and how they are on the pitch and you know it's something to learn from and I'll mention this as well just because I have to pass on my thanks to Next Gen Sports Solutions who represent you and set this up in the first place today Um, and I suppose it comes in with that focus side of things is how important is it having the support off the pitch no, so you yeah. can just focus on the game definitely like you know next gen they've helped me out so much you know um, luckily enough to be with them and you know hopefully it's going to be like that for, for the future um, but yeah it's great support they, they always give me great support you know they're always backing me um, always just telling me to focus on my football and they're, they, you know they're always there to deal with the stuff on the outside of it all and yeah so they've been a great support You can subscribe to Sportspiel on Audioboom, Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spotify, or wherever you get your audio on demand. Turning then to my third sort of overarching topic, if you like, for this this chat, and that's 
almost comes down to say the importance of football or the importance of women's football in this country. Um, and I've, I've talked about the extra responsibility that I, I suppose you feel is on your shoulders to, as this leader in this independent club um, because there are so many eyes on your progress. But do, do you see from, say, the championship level down, do you see things changing, whether it's in terms of coverage, um, attendance levels uh, and things like that, and whether the growth of the game is as rapid at that level as we say see at the WSL level because I think that's where a lot of eyes are maybe focused on yeah I mean look, obviously WSL they're going to have a lot more you know crowd numbers than championship but you know throughout my footballing career like each year every year that's gone on there's hundreds more people at games you know I mean last year yeah it was crazy turning up at games and you'd have like hundreds of people watching you and it's a great feeling but then championship as well like that's getting a lot bigger as well um, I think it will from now on and it has for the last couple of years you know the crowds have got a lot bigger um, and it's great to see because obviously you know get seeing people supporting teams no matter what team it's great for women's football so it's only going to get better and bigger which is just a great feeling and as someone that's been involved in women's football as long as you have now there must be a a, a sense of relief that people are acknowledging it and be a sense of isn't it about time that we start to get the attention that you deserve no yeah definitely like but like even people just coming down and supporting your team and just watching you like it's a great feeling you're thinking like oh they're actually here to watch me like wow that's like a great feeling like you know it's like it's every, every girl's dream who wants, who wants to be a professional footballer you know to play football in front of crowds and win games so you know but yeah I think it's only going to get big, bigger and better so hopefully more things to come and with the World Cup in the summer, and um, we're talking what the week or the week leading up to England Germany at yeah. Wembley, where it's sold out, yeah, going to break crazy. a record. I think that sums up just the importance it's had. But how much impact did the World Cup have on, say, your team players at your level? No, it was massive. Like you know, everyone I think pretty much knew the Women's World Cup was happening, and it was on, you know, the advertisement like on TV, you know, on just everywhere you look it was always being promoted and you know that's, that's such a big thing like you know you got people who didn't really watch women's football before and it was on TV and then they started to watch it and they're like oh wow like you know I'm actually going to take an interest in women's football and I'm like yeah like, so you should like you should like you should it's you know it's great it's great to watch um, but yeah I think from the World Cup it's got a lot bigger you know like you said Wembley sold out for in England um, that's a great achievement, you know. It's, it's, but it's only going to be getting bigger and better, and it's, it is a great feeling to know that that is happening. How do you keep that growth sustained as well? Because I suppose that's maybe the wider talking point at the moment is that you can have these big stadium showcases. I went to the West Ham one, for example, against Spurs. How do you keep that I mean, momentum I think, going? Yeah, I think I think I feel like it sometimes comes down to like the clubs obviously like you know you've got Tottenham who are playing at the men's ground you've got you know Chelsea that played at Stamford Bridge like you know I feel if that we, we do bring this into women's football you know then people are going to be interested and be like oh wow they're, they're actually playing at the men's ground sort of thing so that's like that's wicked um, but yeah I mean it's yeah like you know it's, it's going to get big on so it's, it, there's good things to come and then as a player involved in it we talk about the responsibility for your team but is there a wider responsibility on your shoulders about growing the game in its entirety and putting on essentially what's a good show for people who do come along yeah I mean like you know especially like London City we're like I know I keep saying it but we are a brand new team and you know like if you haven't watched us then I think feel like you should come down to watch us because we've got a lot to prove just because we are a you know, women's only team, like, no, like, men's backing behind us. And it's just something to prove, I guess. Um, so, yeah. And then, I suppose I'll, I'll finish up on this. It's a very big question, though. I, I do like to finish on a big question. Considering your experiences as well, finding football and having it as that distraction, how vital is football to society and also to young girls and women who want to get involved? It's huge because when I was younger, you know, 
and that was the only one thing I wanted to do was to play football and there was there was stuff available for for me when I was a little kid but um, but now it's a lot bigger and there's a lot more things out there for little girls and who want to, to want to do it like they look at players like me and other girls like to be professional footballers you know and you've just got to make sure you keep you keep that identity so they they're aware of that how it how it is like you know and, and it's I think it's I think it's good if we if our stories are out there so young girls aren't afraid to you know do what they want to do um, growing up like women's football was starting to get popular you know um, so I think it is huge because you know I struggled in school I, I my my thing was to go my thing to go to was football so you know there's a lot more out there now for for little for girls who can who want to play football there's like loads of girls teams um, you know you see loads of girls coming to our games and watching and it's a great feeling and so yeah it's huge it is huge and it's keeping that relatability that you were touching upon there with with you and the fans all those young girls and I suppose the work that the club would do in the community as well that must be so rewarding for you to see that firsthand oh, definitely like you know we get girls come to our games you know they want to take photos and get autographs it's a great feeling and to know that they want to be in our position it makes it even better and it makes you it makes you proud as well I guess you know like they want to be in our footsteps when you know when they're older and to be able to, to like give them two minutes after a game it's nothing and you know I know me and the girls are always willing to do that so yeah it is a great feeling two weeks or just under two weeks until the next game against Crystal Palace yep what are the aims in the, the short term but long term what can we see this team doing to really make this season a success listen it's just one of those things where we're just going to be training hard now from now on you know and looking at how Palace are playing um, don't get me wrong they're a good team you know um, so yeah I mean we're going to just take it how it but week by week basically and just training hard now um, focusing on Palace um, so yeah it'll be a good challenge but as long as we're all up for it and yeah I think it's going to be a very good game and lastly to any girl woman whoever who might be listening to this and either wants to get involved in football or wants to go down why should people care about women's football because it's getting bigger and better um, you know like I, like I said before like the young girls coming through they want to be in our position in 10 years time or 5 years time Um so there's so much that's so there's so much more that's going to happen and it's only going to get better. So you know if we have that care from other people and from ourselves then only good things are going to come. So yeah, it's going to be an exciting couple of years to come in women's football. It's definitely exciting. If it wasn't exciting enough anyway seeing its rise um, and like we banged on about a lot on the show um, it really is about time that sports like that actually yeah. got the coverage that it deserved I and mean, it's not just football it goes across a lot of women's sports as no, well yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, so I'll finish off by saying thank you so much Ellie for no, appearing on the podcast no, um, and like I say it's a unique situation this club but to see it succeeding early yeah. doors in the way it is I suppose gives a lot of hope to other teams and other people that a similar thing can be replicated and repeated um, and the, the better this team does the better it is for women's football I yeah. think no, so yeah. thanks so much for coming on no thank you that was great A big thank you to Ellie for coming onto the show and to Next Gen Sport Solutions for setting up the interview. You can find out more about them in the show notes of this episode. You can also find written versions of this interview on our website, that's sportspielonline.com, and on the Offside Rule podcast website, that's offsiderulepodcast.com. As ever, listeners, you can keep up to date with the podcast on our social media pages. We're on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, and all of our handles are Sportspiel Pod. A big thank you as well this week to Sue Anstis and Promote PR for putting us on their list of eight recommended sports podcasts. So if you found us off the back of that, we hope you've enjoyed it. We will be back next week, listeners, with a brand new episode. We will see you very soon.